Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Well, today we have a video using the gel plates. Now, these can be a little bit intimidating and I find that the most common thing I hear that when people purchase these, they are perhaps hesitant to use them, they don't want to damage them, they're not quite sure about what they can and can't use on them. And truly, I tell you just go for gold because this is my very first one I ever purchased. I do have a couple more sizes now, but this is my most loved size and the one I definitely use most often. Um, it is the Jelly Arts uh, brand, I think it is, and it, that sort of tends to do the most techniques. I've really enjoyed this gel plate well and truly gotten my money out of it. So I just want to show you a few things today to make this sort of less intimidating. We don't have to go crazy. I have put some uh, paint, acrylic paints are my go-to for jelly plates. You can absolutely use inks. You can use pigment inks, you can use dye inks. Um, I know that using alcohol inks will perhaps stain your um, jelly plate, but you know, that's a choice. You might have one put aside that um, is purely for that. Now choose four or five stencils or two or three stencils and have those to the side if you want to add in some layers. Now this here is about taking away part of the layer and truly I just think having a play, having a big play, having no expectations and I want to show you with the cards that we create today that actually it can be super simple. You can do a sort of more extravagant things. We're going to choose a couple of cards to create today but they can be, you know, exciting or they can be super super basic to put together and still look stunning um, so here I've chosen the brick stencil and I'm just adding a little bit of texture all around not being fussy I can't necessarily see where it's going on the page and then this page here is a cleanup page just to take off some of that excess acrylic paint by no means do you have to have the, the plate completely clean every time you go to use it uh, particularly if you're using similar colors uh, in the same color families or anything like that there's no real need to add uh, to clean it off because that's just going to add extra texture extra color and you'll be surprised at how good that looks rather than how messy it looks um, that's something that I had to get my head around is that actually all of that texture is beautiful um, and it's something that you have to actually work quite hard to achieve on purpose so don't always worry about cleaning your gel plate completely clean in between sort of you know pulls so I quite like to uh, extend the use of my colors I quite like to use a white as well that way I get different variation with only having to use one colored acrylic paint and then some white I still get really nice uh, variation and it means I don't have to worry about coordinating so many colors that are going to go together now again I've put down the diamonds and all I'm doing is just pressing my print down onto it to get several different little pieces all over my print now what I tend to do with jelly printing because you can sort of go for gold and you end up with literally hundreds of prints all around you you are surrounded by them drying at the end of a jelly printing session and so what I tend to do is I tend to limit myself because I find that really overwhelming short stints for me tend to work better now here I'm going to use one of the Gina K stencils, this gorgeous swirl design and all I'm doing is getting that purple design through and onto my frame here and I really like how this looks but I want a couple more so I'm actually just going to remove the stencil quickly. I've got enough paint on my brayer just to go over it again to smooth it out, pop the stencil back down and then that way there is more paint there to collect and get more on my print. Now, as I was saying, I find it less overwhelming sort of just to have a few, you know, two or three stencils to clean up uh, afterwards and just a handful of gel prints around me to use in different ways rather than big, big piles of things. Now, your mind might work absolutely completely differently to me and that would be fabulous. So I'm just saying there is no right or wrong way to do this. But for me, I just do a little bit of gel printing. I get a few prints, a couple of cleanup prints and I'm good to go. I pop it away. That's enough for me at a time. So here's what I literally ended up with. So these two here, although not really planned, these are sort of my prints that I um, 
can see myself using. They're really easy to use. We're going to turn both of these into cards. And then the other ones that are left on my desk here, these are mainly my cleanup prints. Now, by all means, I don't get rid of these because these are going to be good, but just not for today's video. I have lots of other videos on using up scrap papers, backgrounds that you've made and created. But here's my tip. Now, for me to create cards, sometimes I struggle to envision it when it's on this big um, sheet here. So what I do is I've taken previously my Hero Arts Infinity Rectangle dies and I just cut it out of a plain piece of white paper and then I can move that around to sort of get that frame and I can really easily see if you're a visual person you can see what it's going to look like when you cut out that rectangle and I can kind of wipe out all of that background noise of the other colour um, so you might see, yeah, I want a little bit of pattern down the side here and more blank. Or you might think, no, I want it right in the middle so that I can see a whole lot of pattern. So this is where I find a blank piece of paper really, really useful. And I just keep a couple of different sizes of these um, to the side so that I can sort of put them in front of an image, when I, especially when I have a big print of paper and I know that I want to get several cards out of it. These ones are a little bit smaller, so it's not so bad, but still really handy for me. So then I have chosen uh, one of the rectangles, depending on how big you want the frame to be. And in this case, I wanted the frame to be rather significant because these are a whole lot of color going on here. Um, and so I want that nice, big, chunky white frame to go around the outside. So I have my two panels ready to go. Don't throw away those extra pieces because again, they can be used for an absolute insane amount of background techniques and all sorts of fun. Anyhow, I have this bird here. This is a piece that was in my scrap um, pile and I have fussy cut him out. So he's gonna be the bird that I'm using today. Then I'm just going to use a fine liner pen and draw in some branches. Now this is not necessarily for the bird to sit on. This is really just to sort of, you know, go down that theme a little bit more of branches and birds and all that sort of thing because I don't have a whole lot of that going on in the background. The background is really just coloured beautiful noise which I love. So I'm taking a fine liner pen and just doing a really basic, very basic <laughs> branch um, I guess is maybe what you'd call it. And so um, then I'm going to create another one down the bottom just to sort of even up the page. I have this tiny little scrap left here and I'm just going to freehand cut a branch-ish um, out of this and at the moment it fades into the background just a little too much so I'm going to take a big brush marker now this is actually a sticker the um, material that I was cutting out of is actually a sticker so this is going to work um, really well just for me to be able to peel this off and stick this down as is the bird so that does make life really easy adding a little bit more brown to that definitely helped it stand out from the background and then this gorgeous little birdie is going to sort of sit on this branch in amongst his background and I really like that. I'm actually not going to add any sentiment to these because I have been really enjoying the no sentiment uh, cards and I have, am seeing a lot of people grab for them in my stash. So um, yeah, if that's what they like, I will happily create. <laughs> that definitely uh, expands their usage, I think. Often it is, um, when I watch people flick through my stash, because most of my friends and family, when they come and visit my house, they know they're welcome to take, you know, half a dozen, a dozen, whatever amount of cards with them, just so that they have them uh, in their homes ready to go. But they often will flick past or hold up a card and be like, ah, oh, gorgeous card, but yeah, I'm not sure I would use that sentiment. So, um, you know, maybe next time or something and something lovely and polite. <laughs> and so I do find that the no sentiment cards go down very, very well. Um, so anyhow, we are moving on to the second one. These are the rub-on transfers from scrapbook.com and this is our super duper simple card. Doesn't have to be complicated. We have this beautiful background and this was actually meant to be a cleanup background. So it's just the yellows in the background and then the purples that I put with that Gina K stencil um, I had put on the other card, the bird card, um, the positives. I used the negative, what was left, and printed it on here and I really like it. So the purple and the yellow are contrasting colors. They stand out beautifully. You're able to do that with acrylic paints. They um, are going to contrast each other really nicely and layer them up because they're so thin when you use the gel plate um, that you don't really have to wait for drying time and you can layer them up on top of each other without making mud at all. 
So I have the words thank you here, a big, bold, beautiful thank you. I have used these and had them for quite some time. Um, I love rub-ons. I think they have such a great place in card making, paper crafting. It does mean for the brilliant um, price point of them that you don't have to buy necessarily and purchase stamps or dies. Um, so yeah, I think they absolutely have a great place in my craft space anyway. And I do have a really little craft space, so I do have to be careful about what uh, ends up here and what I choose to invest in. Now I'm going to put a little black tiny matting layer on here just to help this um, stand out with those little gorgeous butterflies and the sentiment in the center. But that is us done for today. A short gel printing session and then two beautiful cards. I think these are very hard to put next to each other because they're very different. Um, but I think separately and individually, both of these look stunning. So I hope that you have enjoyed this today. I hope it has given you some tips and tricks and the confidence to get out your gel plate and give it a go. Of course, supplies will be linked down below. I will also have a link to the Buy Me A Coffee website in case you would like to support my channel. I'm very grateful for that. Here are some videos coming up that you might like, but other than that, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, bye.